Luther's uh, message today is uh, going to be in Psalms. Psalms 139, 1 through 16. Welcome, all the Facebook and uh, YouTube viewers. And we thank you for coming here today. Uh, Psalms 139, 1 through 16. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out, my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. You hem me in behind and before you have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed into the depths, you are there. If I rise up on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I, fearfully, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and understanding of his word. In 1937, Walt Disney, we've talked about this before, released the very first full-length animated movie. Raise your hand and tell me what movie that was. What movie was that? Huh? No, Snow White. That was close. Snow White and the Seven Drawers. It was a huge task. And we don't think about that. Disney artists drew over one million pictures. One million pictures. Each picture flashed onto the scene to make it moving. Now, I want you to think about this. These artists sitting down and drawing all of these pictures, over a million of them. How long do you think those each picture, that maybe took them two or three hours, or maybe even longer to draw, how long do you think it was actually on the screen? One twenty-fourth of a second. One twenty-fourth of a second that an artist took two or three hours to draw was and it was over. Isn't that amazing? But as we watch it in full real time, we don't even think about that. We just watched it as a movie, didn't we? We didn't think about the pains taking time that just lasted a second for each and every picture. It seems so simple. We have all idea of what went into it. And that's the same way it is with our lives. Our lives are like that movie. God puts infinite thought, unbelievable skill, and careful attention in each and every single detail of our lives. Yet as our lives run, regular speed, if you will, we have no idea how much God and his providence fills every single second of our lives. That's what we're going to look at for the next few weeks. We're beginning that study today. Why am I here? What is life all about? 
And that's one of the main topics that I would have to say in our world today, in our society today, is so confused about. People have no idea why they're here on earth. And that's the first thing that we're on your uh, sheet today is, why am I here and what is my purpose? Why am I here and what is my purpose? This gets pretty good. I want you to listen to it. Number one, what is life all about? What is life all about? A, Focusing on ourselves will never reveal our purpose. I want to repeat that. Focusing on ourselves will never reveal our purpose. Our purpose of our life is far greater than our own personal fulfillment. Our own personal fulfillment. It's more than our families, it's more than our careers, it's more than our dreams. This is one of your questions. You were born by his purpose and for his purpose. Underline that. You were born by his purpose and for his purpose. You didn't create yourself, so there is no way you can tell yourself what you were created for. God created you. Now I want you to look at Job 12.10. Job 12.10. In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. Of all mankind. There's a story about a man that was in the mountains and he was trying to reach a certain place. And he got lost up in those mountains. And he stopped somewhere to a local person. He says, this is where I want to go. How do I get there? And the man says, you can't get there from here. He says, you've got to start on the other side of the mountain. And that's the way it is with us. It's the same way. If we're looking for our purpose and we're thinking about ourselves, we're on the wrong side of the mountain. We have to get on the other side of the mountain because it's of God that has the purpose for our lives. So let's look at B. You must begin with God. You must begin with God. You were created by God and for God. Look at Romans 8, 6. Romans 8, 6. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. That's quite a scripture. Governed by the flesh is death, but governed by the spirit is life and peace. If you try and to discuss the purpose of life in just the world's surroundings in our world today, in the world's standards, if you will, they will lead you to some what's called self-help books. Almost every one of them will, will take you to do some of these things, if not all of them. Consider your dreams. The clarity of your values, set goals, aim high, be disciplined. Now, following these may very well lead to good and great success. But you can have great success and not be in the purpose of God. You may miss the purpose of God just because you're, you're successful, just because uh, you have all kinds of money or uh, world standards doesn't mean you're where God wants you to be. Ask so many movie stars and professional uh, uh, sports people that have all the money they could ever use but are terribly, terribly sad and miserable. Money will not give you happiness. Searching and all for the wrong places to just to be happy. Your next one. God is not the starting point of your search, but he's the source of it. He's not the starting point, but he is the source of it. Look at C. So how do I discover? How do I discover my purpose? Well, we can speculate. 
We can guess, theorize. But Ephesians 1.11, let's look at that. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the, uh, the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of whose will? His will. We don't have to speculate. We don't have to guess. He has a plan for it. Look at Jeremiah 29, 11 through 12. We read this oftentimes and, uh, around graduation times. God says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and to, not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. How do I know? You ask him. You go to him. You read the Bible. That is our owner's manual. We pray and ask for a revelation. Sometimes they come to us in ways that we don't expect. But we're always listening and watching and wanting. God loves you. And he has the very best plan for you. Why not ask him? Wouldn't that make sense? Your next question. God was thinking of you long before you, were thought, you thought of him. God was thinking of you long before he thought we thought of him. Number two. The second major thing when we are thinking about this is this. You are not an accident. The schools want to teach us that we're not any different than any other living thing. And that our coming together and coming here on this earth was just an accident some sort of explosion or some sort of other thing. But that's not true. A, long before you were conceived by your parents, you were conceived in the mind of God. God knew you long before you even came about. He knew you. Look at Psalms 139.15. 139.15. 15. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. God knew you. He knew you first. You're not a mistake. You're not a fluke. You're not an accident. Now, oftentimes, we parents will tell our last, usually our kids, is, oh, you were an accident. Well, I'm not sure we should tell them that. They weren't an accident. Maybe they weren't planned. But they were planned by God. God had every, every child, every person planned. God has a reason for everything. Look at 139.16. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in the book before one of them came to be. Every day of your life has already been determined. Did you know that? I didn't say that. The Word of God tells you that. And He has a reason for each and every one of us. All the plants and all the animals. Each person He has in mind. Why did God create us? He had a reason for all of us. Our personalities, our talents. Did you ever think about the fact that why wasn't I born somewhere else? Why wasn't I born at another time, like in the 1800s or the 1500s? Why was I born in Mexico or Rush Hill, Missouri? God has a plan for each and every one of us. We could have been born in Africa and uh, New Zealand or some other time or place, but no, we were born here for a reason. God's motive, B, for creating you was love. God's motive for creating you was love. Look at Ephesians 1.4. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight and in love and in love. 
There's perfect love in the fellowship of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Why did God create the cosmos, the universe, nature? All because he loved us. There is perfect love in the fellowship of God and the Trinity. God made you in order to express his love. There is a God. He created you. There's no accident. He has a purpose for you. And we discover the meaning and the purpose only when we make God the focus point, the reference point of our lives. Now I'm going to close with the last point, but it's a very important one. Very last point. When we go to Walmart to buy a picture frame, most of the time there's a picture in it. The picture in it to us is worthless. We don't know that person. <laughs> that dog's not our dog. We take that, we crumple it up, and we put something that's very important to us, an image of real life that might be uh, a loved one or uh, some very special um, image that, that means a lot to us, a special memory. It contains a very image of real life and it represents something that someone really cares for. And that's the way it is with our life. When there was life in the womb, God has placed his image in that frame. The Bible says we are made in God's image. It doesn't mean we look like him. It means we have the, some abilities that he has to love and to care and to be concerned and have morality and, and discernment and, and to praise and worship him. We have those abilities. We are made in God's image. And now the frame has greater value because it bears the mark of God. And then something can happen when you get older, you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and that picture becomes full color. Because now we have the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. Love and joy and peace and forbearance and kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control are all ours. Because God loves us so much. Now the frame has been created a, a greater value because it bears the mark of God and the salvation of Jesus Christ. Look at Psalms 139, 13 through 14. God is not the starting point of our purpose. He is the source of it. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. Again, God is not the starting point of our purpose. He is the source of it. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, for creating mankind. We thank you, O Lord, for loving us enough that you want to be part of our lives. Not for just a short time, not just for a little while, but for eternity. So we pray, O oh Lord, that we can be your people. Help us to find the things that you want us to be for you. And let us remember that our purpose of life is your purpose for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number... Anyone who would like to join our church or dedicate their lives to Christ may come forward during this hymn.